In this lecture, we're going to focus on applying genetic algorithms to solve optimization problems. So if you watch the simulated annealing problem, you probably remember this chart. So sometimes we have a uh, function that we're trying to maximize. And if we simply try to go through some hill climbing algorithm, we can sometimes get lucky and find the global maximum. And at times, we can be unlucky and never really find that global maximum. So usually when we're unlucky, we get stuck at some local maximum and can't find a clear way of escaping that. Genetic algorithms are thus another uh, alternative to escaping local maximums and moving towards the global maximum. So what are genetic algorithms? Genetic algorithms are stochastic search algorithms inspired the, by the basic principles of biological evolution and natural selection. GAs simulate the evolution of living organisms where the fittest individuals dominate over the weaker ones by mimicking the biological mechanisms of evolution such as selection, crossover, and mutation. So now I want you guys to really focus on those uh, three last keywords, selection, crossover, and mutation. Those three components uh, are going to be the main uh, parts in our genetic algorithm and in the examples that you're going to see below. And currently, right now, this is a Python notebook. If you're an R user and you prefer using R, uh, you can follow this link here to go to the GAR package. The example that you're going to see below is uh, inspired by the GAR package documentation. So if you have any questions or comments uh, about this, uh, just feel free to click the link below and follow up on that. So previously, we talked about basic hill climbing and how that's not a good approach to finding uh, a global maximum. So genetic algorithms for numerical optimization use uh, in evolutionary strategies. So the basic steps in a GA algorithm are to basically start out with a population of potential candidates with certain characteristics that you'd like to explore. Then for all individuals in that current population, you calculate the fitness using some fitness function. And optionally, as you're going along through each generation, you want to keep track of the fittest individual as the fittest individuals will often uh, move you closer to the global uh, solution. Then, as we're moving along in our iteration process, we want to generate a new generation of candidate solutions. So what do we do? We sample uh, the current parents or the current population based on their current fitness. So those who have a higher fitness have a greater likelihood of being resampled and being seen in the next generation. And this spawns the children. So now that we have a children of candidate solutions, we mutate them based on some mutation rate. And optionally, uh, we apply some cross crossover where we take pairs of candidate solutions exchange some genetic information or characteristics, and uh, we come out with uh, updated children. Once we have applied mutation and crossover, we then go back to step two where we calculate the fitness and we continue along with the same process. So now I'm going to show you how this all looks like in a numerical example. So this being Python, I'm going to use the two libraries, NumPy and Matplotlib. Here I've defined my fitness function. 
and this is what it looks like. So it's another lumpy function, and there are plenty of opportunities in this uh, function for an algorithm to get stuck at a local maximum. So this is going to be a good example where we can see how effective GAs are at finding that global maximum. So what does our uh, GA algorithm look like for this specific numerical example? So first we have to define the fitness function. And that fitness function can just be the, the function that we're trying to maximize. And that's this function here. So we have x squared plus x times cosine 2x plus x, x squared. And we also um, define the initial population, the initial parents. And for me, for this example, this is going to be an array of uniformly distributed values over the domain of H. So if you saw this graph here, we're basically just going to uniformly sample from negative 20 to 20. And this is just to illustrate how arbitrary uh, the, um, the generation of candidate solutions can be. Then we calculate the fitness of all individuals. So I take all those values that range from negative 20 to 20, I plug them into H, and I get some fitness value. I then resample those initial uh, parents based on their fitness. So again, those with greater uh, fitness have a greater likelihood of being resampled and being seen in the next generation. And uh, I am going to apply some mutation. In this example, I'm not going to apply crossover as that's going to complicate the example uh, more than is necessary. And overall, just mu mutation alone works just fine for finding a global solution. So after step three, I'm basically going to go back to step two where I uh, calculate the fitness of each individual in my gene pool. Uh, then I'm going to resample to create the next generation. I'm going to go through these two steps over and over again until uh, I get a solution to my problem. And uh, I should follow up that uh, the basic idea with this algorithm is that uh, with every new generation, we are updating our population and we're updating to basically filter out those with uh, weaker fitness, basically those that aren't uh, a good solution to our problem. And we're resampling those candidate solutions that have a high fitness, those that are uh, likely to maximize our function and uh, give us our global uh, solution. So in order to proceed with this example, I need to find a mutation function. Uh, so with my, as I'm generating candidate solutions, I'm going to keep this in a Python list. So the mutate function takes a list of parents and a fitness function. I'm going to define the uh, current population size. I'm going to calculate the fitness for every individual in my population. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to filter for only uh, candidates with positive value. So let's go back to the graph here. Uh, if you look here on the y-axis, you can see that my function dips a little bit below zero. So essentially, I might have some candidate solutions that might have negative values. That's not helpful to me, so I'm just going to filter those candidate solutions out of my population altogether. So after filtering those uh, solutions out of my population, I'm going to resample based on fitness. 
and after I resample them, then I apply a little bit of mutation. And this mutation comes from just a uniform distribution. So I decide to choose a symmetrical distribution. You could also replace this with a something like a normal distribution. But you, the idea is to just add a little bit of fuzzing so that the population isn't static. It, there's some randomness to it. And then I return the children as a list. So here is the function GA, which uh, is basically the genetic algorithm itself. So it takes a couple of arguments. So it takes the parents, the fitness function, a population size, which I've defaulted to 100, and max iter, which is the generation. Uh, and I've set that to 100 generations. Next, what I've done is I've created a list uh, to keep track of historical values. I have a function here that's uh, called getFittestParent, which basically takes in the current population and the current uh, fitness values. And what it does is that it tries to identify the... Um, the but the most fittest individual in that current population. Then I plot out that initial population so you can uh, see what's going on. Then I begin the genetic algorithm. So for each generation from one to max iterations, I mutate the current population to generate a new uh, generation of candidate solutions. I update my most current uh, fittest individual. And if that current fit, fittest individual is um, has a higher fitness than what I've previously seen, then I update that best fitness and that best parent. So with each generation, I'm always searching for the, the best solution. And that's what this if, if um, uh, argument is doing. Then for every 10th generation, I print out some progress of what's going on. And in my history, what I'm doing is I'm saving the max fitness of each generation and that's just to see how after the 100 or so generations what has the progress looked like and finally after it's done running I make another plot to see what the last generation looked like so before I can run it, I need to initialize some initial population. And as I stated earlier, I'm basically just sampling from uniform distribution from negative 20 to positive 20. And that initial sample size is just 100 individuals. So 100 candidate solutions. And then I pass that initial population and my fitness function into GA and I let it run. And here are the results. For generation zero, my best fitness was 170, and the current fitness was 170 as well, because that's all I had. And the current solution was negative 953. So that put us over here on the negative side, which was um, where the global maximum clearly is not. The global maximum would be about 9.5. And so by generation 10, that's what we get. So the current best parent was um, 9.5. And the best fitness so far seen was 189. And you can see that through the rest of the generations, the can solution stays about 9.5. So it converges at 9.5 with an, an optimal fitness of almost 189. 
And the final solution is 9.5 with an almost uh, val fitness value of 189. So to explain what's going on in this graph, basically these X marks indicate the initial population. Again, we init the initial population was just a uniform sample of 100 units from negative 20 to 20. And over time, it basically learned, the algorithm learned to filter all these um, values out and focus solely to sample right around 9.5. And so these orange points indicate that last generation of values. And this blue dot right at the top indicates the best value. So you can see that our GA algorithm performed well at finding a global solution to this problem. And one more thing we want to examine is also how this algorithm performed over time. So over time, we started high, then went down, then went back up, and kind of fluctuated a bit. And let's say after generation 40, we basically just stabilized, which is good to see. Um, we didn't have something crazy like going up, then dramatically down, then back up, and then down. Our solution converged to an appropriate um, area around the true global solution. And now if you want to see this example in um, kind of real time, just run the GA optimization example and you'll see this uh, same example in time lots so you can see the progression of each generation.